Deload or Unload, Light Week or Recovery Week, Restitution Microcycle or Regeneration Microcycle, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Everyone in the fitness realm knows what it is, yet you'd get a different description of it from each person. One thing is almost always the same though, it lasts for a period of one week or one microcycle. What is a deload? Traditionally, a deload is more a period of reducing fatigue, with, which could take place anytime during a regular training program. It's something that's ongoing in any type of program. And a taper is essentially a deload that takes place before you need to peak performance. So you would do a taper before a powerlifting contest, an Olympic weightlifting contest, or typically any kind of event, you know, a competition. Whereas a deload is more something you do to make your program sustainable in the long run. Deloads are a widely used and quite popular recovery tool or technique. So one would think there is a considerable amount of research to back this up. However, this is not the case. While deloads have been described in textbooks and researchers have used them in multiple studies, there's a lack of consensus on what it actually is. However, there seem to be a few key points that everyone can agree upon. A deload is a period dedicated to reducing fatigue where the training volume and or the load is intentionally reduced to allow both physical and mental recovery to take place and for the athlete to resume back to progressive training. So the rationale seems clear, but what is the theory behind deloading? Why should you deload? To put it simply, the fitness fatigue model proposes that a training session results in two effects. An increase in fitness, which is positive and increases performance, and an increase in fatigue, which is negative, thus reducing performance. As you probably guessed, the performance would be the sum of the two. Furthermore, the model suggests that fatigue has a cumulative effect, and when fatigue accumulates to the point where fatigue after effects exceed the fitness effects, overreaching occurs. To prevent this from happening, both coaches and researchers have incorporated pre-planned deloads in their training structure. However, here is what Menno has to say. Now, if you actually start looking at data in terms of what fatigue are we talking about, if you look at fatigue strictly in the sense of neuromuscular fatigue, as in a loss of force production within the muscle, then that actually changes things a lot. And now you see that many DLO proponents talk more about maybe psychological fatigue or uh, connective tissue fatigue, which may take longer to recover from than neuromuscular fatigue, but purely in the physical sense, which I think is, is the most important and the most researched, is, is actually also the line that's most challenging to traditional deload models, because most neuromuscular fatigue does not last a full week. And it often uh, also does not concern the entire body. Um, so I think deloading should be body part specific, so it should be specific to the, the muscles that actually need the deloading. Because you know, if your biceps is very fatigued, that doesn't mean you can't squat. And it should be tailored to the actual recovery time that you need to dissipate the neuro neuromuscular fatigue. And most research finds that any kind of habitual workout that is remotely reasonable generally doesn't take more than 72 hours to recover from. And there have been a number of studies in trained individuals showing that eight to 10 sets of uh, bench presses in particular, uh, squats in one case, again, still did not take more, even to failure, supposedly, uh, did not take more than 72 hours to recover from. So I don't think, even in extreme scenarios, for a taper or a deload, you generally should need more than three days of significantly reduced training volume. Well, how should you deload then? Generally, Menno doesn't recommend traditional week-long deloads. However, in cases where individualization is not possible, such as large teams or training templates, pre-planned deloads may be convenient. So if you do decide to go that route, here's what you should keep in mind. I generally recommend uh, adjusting volume and not other things because they will adjust multiple things. If you're changing the training frequency, you're also changing the training volume. It's gonna change the setup of the whole program and it's gonna make it difficult to identify what really was the difference and to track progression. If you can't track your progression, then you don't know if your deload was successful in the first place. So, and volume is almost always the culprit um, when it comes to excess fatigue. So I generally recommend manipulating only volume. It's by far the, the most practical and the most direct way to manage fatigue. Instead of conventional deloads, 
Menno uses what he calls reactive deloading. As the name implies, rather than pre-planning a deload, you would deload in response to reduced performance. I think for a lot of people, deloads actually, especially the traditional week-long deloads are not needed. Uh, but I do recommend using reactive deloads, which are more uh, light versions. So typically a way I would program a reactive deload is if I see someone's not progressing or even regressing, whether they should be progressing, and there is reason to believe that that could be due to physical fatigue, then I skip all remaining sets or I default to speed work. That's what I commonly do for every exercise. So then it's specific to the exercise that needs to deload. It only deloads the body parts that may be fatigued. If something's progressing, that's, that's really, really important to know. If something's progressing, there is no excess fatigue. Progress completely negates any possibility of overreaching or overtraining because the very definition of overreaching and overtraining, the fundamental criterion for that is regression or lack of progress at least. If we see that strength is increasing, then you are not only recovering, but even super compensating. So you are definitely not in a, a continual cycle of under recovery, which is basically uh, the idea of overreaching or overtraining. Regardless of the method, you probably should assess whether your deload has worked. You want to see if your performance has changed as a result of the deload. Because if you do like a light intro week, then you don't know if the deload was actually necessary. So I've, I've definitely seen both where in some cases I tell people at this point, I think actually it might be that you're under, systemically under recovered. So let's you know take two days off and then just try to continue with the program. And in some cases I see, well, they've had a, a bump in strength, uh, usually like 2.5% max, but some, somewhat of a bump that's consistent across many exercises and they can progress further now. That's an indication, okay, maybe the program was a bit much. Uh, maybe we need an extra rest day per week or we need to taper down the volume a little bit. But I've also seen cases where, much more often actually, where people are convinced they needed the deload and we actually tried taking two days off and afterwards they were either weaker or absolutely no difference. Often there's just no, no effect on strength. And you need to actually test that because that is the test of whether the deload was actually so successful at reducing the supposedly excess fatigue that was there. So let's summarize what we've learned. Deloads are a period of reduced training stress that aims to reduce fatigue while maintaining your gains in order to allow for further productive training. Deloads should most likely be between three and seven days long. You can either proactively plan them in high stress or training fatigue weeks, usually every three to eight weeks, or reactively incorporate them when performance is declining. Unless performance is taking a hit across most muscle groups, you may want to consider doing a muscle-specific deload. To deload, you can reduce many elements of your program that cause fatigue, but a simple approach may be to reduce the number of sets you do across the week by somewhere between 50 and 80%. Finally, if you don't have enough time to train to really cause much fatigue, you may not even need any deloads.